So now we're going to predict some products in some uh, EAS reactions with substituted benzene rings. And in this case, uh, HNO3, H2O4, we're doing nitration, we're adding a nitro group. So, and if we look here, this lovely species of carbonyl is an electron withdrawing group, and it is a meta director. And so it doesn't really matter which meta position you choose, whether you choose this one here or this one here, they're totally equivalent. So I'm just going to choose this one. So in general, when you're predicting products, you should just assume it's going to happen once, unless you're kind of implied to, to figure out otherwise. Uh, so in this case, we have one nitro group to one of the meta positions, and there's the product we're predicting. All right, in this next example here, we've got a hydroxyl group, and you've got to realize that is a donating group, and it's also an ortho para director here. And so in this case, Br2, FeBr3, we're going to be adding a bromine. So one big mistake students often make is they think that whatever we're adding does the directing, but it's already what's on the benzene ring that's going to do the directing here. And the OH says, whatever's coming on, it's going ortho para to me. So and that leaves us with a couple of options. When you've got an ortho para director, unless there's some serious steric hindrance, generally you predict both ortho and para. And so in this case, I've got two ortho positions, this one and this one, and you can pick either one. This thing is symmetrical and they're equivalent. So, and there's the ortho product, and then we've got one para position. And so we get a second product here, and you're expected to predict both of these products forming. So in this next example here, we're doing a friedel crafts acylation with this combination of reagents. And we see we've already got an ethyl group attached, and that ethyl group is a donating group. It's one of these right here. And we see that it's also, an, therefore, an ortho para director. Uh, and so in this case, we could direct our new acyl group into... Uh, either the ortho or para positions. Now, one thing you might note about friedel crafts acylations is that uh, due to bulkiness and sterics, they generally are going to do more para than ortho, and usually by a significant amount. And so oftentimes, we just have you predict the para and just kind of ignore the ortho if we're doing a friedel crafts acylation. So in this case, I'm just looking at the para. We would get some minor product, probably not very much, though, of the ortho. Uh, and again, it's just due to the bulkiness of the acyl group that's adding. So this next example is kind of a classic example for predicting products here. And uh, you've got two benzene rings, and one of the mistakes students make is they often assume, uh, okay, we're going to do an EAS reaction twice. Well, we're not going to do it twice here, but uh, Cl2AlCl3 is going to add one chlorine in place of a hydrogen, so substitution. And you're only going to do it once, generally, is kind of the rule. And so if you're only going to do it once, it means you've got to choose one ring or the other, whichever one is more reactive. So if I look at the ring on the left, this group is definitely donating, and the other benzene here might be slightly donating. So, but if I look at the benzene on the right, this carbon right here, that's going to be a withdrawing group, it's a partial positive charge, and the one on the other side is going to be donating. And so if I look, the one on the left has two donating groups, whereas the one on the right has got a withdrawing and a donating. And so the one on the left here is going to be the more reactive. Now, we've got a strong donating on this side, a weak donating on this side. If they conflict, the stronger donating group gets to decide uh, where to go. And so in this case, he's an ortho para director here for an OCH3. And in this case, there's his ortho positions, there's his para. His para is already taken. There's no hydrogen there. We can't do it there. So we're going to have to pick either ortho, which means we could get a couple of different products here. This thing's not perfectly symmetrical. So in this case, we could add a chlorine right here. But technically, I should have drawn this twice. We could add the chlorine down on this side as well. Cool, so there's your two products. The orthos in this case are not equivalent, and so you've got to consider both. All right, in this last example here, we've actually already got two substituents on our benzene ring. We've got a methyl group, which is just a plain R group and is donating, and we've got a nitro group here, which is a strong withdrawing group. And if there's any conflict here, the, the rule says that uh, if you've got donating withdrawing groups, the strongest donating group wins. So even though we've got a weak donating and a strong withdrawing, the donating group here is going to do the directing. Uh, and so this donating group is an ortho para director, so he would direct ortho to him as that carbon, that carbon, or the para one, that carbon. Whereas our other guy is a meta director, and he's directing things to either go to that carbon or that one, which is already taken. So there is a conflict here, and our donating group decides. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind here is that even though he's the one deciding, you can't do substitution in this ortho position. Uh, between two substituents, there's too much steric hindrance. That's, we usually consider that to be blocked. Don't expect substitution to occur there at all. So in this case, with Br2 and FeBr3, we're going to be substituting a bromine for one of the hydrants. So and in this case, we've got the two positions left. One of them could be here, and the other one it's 
right here. So two products predicted here, but we will not predict that third again happening right there. Too much Derek hindrance.